Hey guys, Sibadiah here. It is once again that time where we have a look at any tips you've all left for me in the last video. So let's get started. An awkward bean says, on the topic of burning bodies, it's always safer to do it on the streets slash parking lots because the fire will not spread at all. Well, it's a good thing we got this tip before burning any bodies on my playthrough because I would have totally done it somewhere on the grass near my base. Not me burning down my base because of fire spread. Thank you, Awkward Bean, for saving me from the fires of hell where I belong anyway because of my war crimes. Kojiro Sensei says, If you get chased by dozens of zombies, you can distract them with doors. So just walk around doors and they will automatically start banging the door instead of chasing you. Fun fact, this also works with windows. It is a very good beginner's horde distraction strategy, which we've not fully discussed in the series yet. But all you have to do if you're being chased by a few zombies that you do not feel confident in killing is just walk around a building. They will get distracted and you are free to continue on with role-playing Stardew Valley. Catphobia says, quick tip, you can add sheets to your window doors giving yourself sight protection from zombies outside. What? Bro, how do I have over 200 hours on Zomboid without knowing that you can put blankets on the doors? <laughs> That's crazy. Well, if you ever want to completely black out the inside of your house, you know that you can do it with a door as well. Thank you everyone for leaving your tips and tricks for me. I love reading your comments and learning more about how absurdly detailed this gem of a game is. So if you have any more, not commonly known features, feel free to drop them in the comments for the rest of us. We also have a Discord, so if you'd like to join the community for Zomboid discussions, memes, and general banter. The link is there for you in the description. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. If you'd like to see more, then go ahead and subscribe. And if you'd like to support me by throwing me some spare change, the donation page is down in the description. And thank you to Carbon for the latest donation. Anyways, let's start off with day four. Here we go, it's time for day four, yeah. I am once again sat in front of the TV at 6am in the morning, watching the cooking show, watching the, the, the Jimmy Neutron. Wow, after this day, we're pretty much halfway through the week. It's, it's a madness. Our cooking experience didn't really go up that much today, and they're already playing ads. All right then, let's start getting up. Let's start moving. So I do have a few things that I want to tick off today, and it is going to be revolving around our base, as well as some looting. So definitely look forward to that if you enjoy that kind of content. Right then, where is the Das Auto? Where is my Volkswagen? There it is. It's a special make, this one. It has the the the, the beep oops. The the, the wait, 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 wait. slaps roof of car. This bad boy can fit so much noise in it. Oh shit. Right then, let's have a look in the back. Now I want to open it, not close it. So we've got quite a few bits, but we do have quite a bit of space. So the first thing on the agenda today is to start getting something which will preserve our food. Obviously, we're going to need to get quite a bit of food, including fresh ingredients and such. And we are going to need a way to keep those fresh ingredients fresh for a longer while. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our way to the store, the big one, not the small one. And let's just take care of any zombies that we find on the way. I want to make sure that we slowly start taking them out in this area which means that any zombies that we encounter we're just gonna kind of like you know we're just gonna come on you as well you ain't special there we go you might not be special but do you have anything special on you no neither of you have anything good well, that's disappointing. Although I do see something that might be quite in. Oh, I thought that was something else. I thought that I, I thought that was one of them the the pulley things that you put on your car for more stuff. But I suppose not. And now we've got a few zombies to deal with. Nice. There's one. And the second one. Well, third one, technically. Look at their quality. I've reduced them to pixels, bro. And they've not really had anything good. It's a bit disappointing. Let's grab one more. You almost had me. You almost got there. 
Not quite yet though. Right, what you want to do for today's episode, and just generally around your world, if you see any sort of garbage bags, you want to make sure to grab them. We are going to need them a little later on today. Is there anything useful in this car park? Let me just have a quick look. No, it doesn't look like it. Right, well, let's go back down. Right, let's continue. So what we are looking for is a chest freezer. And usually you can find them in restaurants or massive shops or most commonly gas stations that is a lot of zombies right how do we deal with this probably very slowly and carefully isn't it okay let's see what we're doing there are quite a few but we should be fine remember number one tip for combat do not panic as soon as you panic that is where things start to go bad but as long as you keep control of the situation you should be completely fine. As perfectly demonstrated here. Remember, no fast movements, no spam clicking, slow and steady hits, and you will survive. As long as you don't panic. Let's just see if they had anything good on them. Rosewood map, right, we already have that. And a walkie-talkie. No, we'll be alright without that, if I'm honest. We still haven't found a radio with the emergency broadcast system, have we? Well, hopefully we'll find one soon. Whoop. Almost. Well, we've only just began today and we've already had a few close calls. Black underpants. Oh, yeah, don't mind if I do, don't worry about it. Ooh, we got another one. Right, let's just move our car here. Right, let's move our car down. Another little pro tip, especially when using a car. When finding a big horde of zombies do not stop in the middle of them stop a little far away from them that way that way you have time to turn your engine off get out of your car and coordinate yourself before getting mauled up plus you don't want to get stuck in your car in a horde of zombies that is not a good position to be in And we got a few more that we've just attracted from the car park. I wanted to, I went for a little ride in the car park because I wanted to have a look to see if there was any uh, any more of those pulley things, which we haven't found yet, because if you manage to find them, oh, they are so, so good to have. It's just an inventory upgrade for your car. It's amazing. All right, welcome to the Rosewood Mall. Well, mall might be a bit of an overstatement. It's kind of a, just a big store, really, with a laundromat equipped next to it. And a few zombies. We're just gonna let them be for now. So in this place, we pretty much have so, so much food. You've got a bunch of fresh vegetables, a bunch of fresh fruit. You've got a bunch of cake, but most of it seems to be stale by now. What about the meats? What do we have for the meats? Oh, that was gunshots. We've got a stale squid, meat patty. Yeah, most of it is stale. We've got ham and salami and sausage. The ham and salami are alright. So it doesn't look like we're gonna get our hands on too much of these things. But then of course we got sweets and canned stuff and coffee and cereals. Places like this are just generally really good to loot. What about the fridges? Do we have anything in the fridges? Of course we do. Cheese, eggs, mayo, milk. This is good. This is great. Now the main reason we are here though is this. The ice boxes. Now, we're only going to need one. You can have two, but I found that I one is usually enough. If you have one of these and then one fridge, that's pretty much enough for your survival. I always take all of the ice cream, though. You always want to have ice cream. Now, so in order to grab this, all you have to do is go into this little tool, click pick up, and then pick it up like so. Now, because it is quite heavy... What will it, and it's, it comes in two parts. What you will have to do, once you click pick up, it'll disassemble it into two different little parts. And in that case, you just have to take the first part. You quickly take it and you quickly plop it into your car boot. And then you go ahead and you take the second part and you do the exact same thing. I hear a zombie. That's not good. Right. Plop it down. We don't want to fight while we're overweight with, with a fridge. There we go. That could have ended up badly. Damn, good thing I heard that. A Hawaiian red shirt and a classic coat. Cloak, my bad. Well, bro, you do be looking very stylish. And the condition is quite good. You know what? I might as well just take the Hawaiian shirt. I am feeling... I am feeling quite bonita. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. The fridge. 
Just grab that quickly, take it over into the into the car. And there we go. Popsicle fridge one and popsicle fridge two. Ooh, and while we're hungry, let's do something that we weren't able to do in the last episode. Well, let me just... So let's equip the spoon. I think that's how you do it. And now if I eat... Oh, uh, look at that. Ah, uh, I am eating through my mask. Oh, the skill, the grace. Oh, look, it's Spoodle. Just throw away the tin can. We don't really need it. Can and then let's put Spoodle back into her bag. Now, most of the meat might be stale. There is still the ham and the salami, which is pretty good. We're going to grab these. And then I have also noticed that a lot of the vegetables and fruits are also still really good. So we're going to grab all of them. And when we get home, we're going to freeze them so that we can use them or eat them at our leisure if you do plan on looting any food places or any you know getting yourself a freezer to freeze some bits and stuff that you find that you can eat definitely do it as soon as you can if you do not plan on traveling and you've set up your base within the first i don't know few days like i have then the sooner you get your hands on a chest freezer and the sooner you loot all of these food places with fresh stuff the better apple and bananas carrot cherry corn grapefruit grapes ham all of this stuff can go in here we will sort it out as soon as we're back home okay let's just get the rest of it still have quite a few bits out here we don't want to leave them it would be a massive massive waste by the way as you saw the meats have gone stale so the best way of acquiring meat and uh, other stuff like that is by looting residential houses and looking in their freezers they usually have quite a bit of stuff there that you can pick up and eat so that's pretty useful when you need to fill up your uh, meat supply i noticed that we do have some burritos let's eat one we might as well we've just had a can of peaches which it, it's good but i don't think it's the you know the best right let's see we've got a few more little bits that we can grab oh and these strawberries have gone stale well that's not good let's throw those away we don't need those and as i mentioned before Let's grab the garbage bag. I'm just going to quickly scour this place for any more garbage bags because we are going to need them later on in this episode if everything goes according to plan. Right, that seems to be all right. Okay, let's go. Ooh, water dispensers. Now, these things are really useful because these things can hold 250 units of water. Now, that is a lot of water so if you do end up coming across one definitely grab it if you if you can it is definitely very heavy so you don't want to hold it for too long you want to make sure to get it into your car as soon as you can because your health will start decreasing and i know and correct me on this if i am wrong but i swear if you hold a lot of heavy stuff at once for too long you can actually fracture or even break the bones in your legs and you definitely don't want to do that right then so this place we seem to have pretty much everything we need let me just double check the strawberries because the cherries are stale we don't want to take anything stale i probably should have done this earlier just so we had quite a few more things that are fresh but it's all right we can survive it's nothing too bad most of it is still quite fresh so it should be all right okay let's go so we've got everything we need let's head back home and it's just hit 11 o'clock so that should we should be perfectly on time with everything that we want to do all right let me just watch my my perfect parking ooh, 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 ooh. nailed it okay let's set it all up Okay, let's set it all up before we watch the 12 o'clock carpentry show. So, the way you set this up, because it's in two parts, you don't have to hold both of the parts at once. You just put one of them into your inventory. I usually put the second one. You go into your house, you put it where you want it to be. So if I go over here, I drop it down on the ground. And then I go ahead and I grab the second part. Popsicle fridge, there we go. And now if I go and stand on top of the second part and then I right click the first part, I click place item, the first one. That's the, that's not, hold on, that's not it. If I click place item, the second one, there we go. And now I just want to put it there like so Ta-da! in order to be able to build it you need to make sure that the both parts are within either your inventory or one part is in your inventory and the rest of the parts are in your proximity which is basically this on the floor and there you go so we have a fridge with quite a few good bits in it and we've got three freezers so let's organize any fresh vegetables or fruits i usually put in one half of the freezer and then the rest which is meats i put in the second half that way i don't have 
things that are mixed and I can easily pick whichever I want. Anything else like butter, spices, stuff like that. Things that I'm currently using to cook or that I plan on using to cook, I put into the fridge. And then stuff like ice cream, I usually put in the fridge freezer, like so. Mainly because the fridge freezer has, oh, wrong, wrong one. Mainly because the fridge freezer has 20 units of storage while the rest of them have 30 each. So it's just good to keep organized like that in terms of your food. Okay, let's just quickly drop the rest of it in there. Salami, potato, and then all of my fruits and vegetables over here. Oh, and it's 12 o'clock. We quickly, come on, drop everything in there so we can go watch the carpentry show. There we go. Quick, hurry, we're watching. Okay, we're here, we've made it. Ooh, we're almost level four carpentry. I do hope we make it. We're getting a bit more carpentry experience from this than we did with cooking, which is good. But it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to level up, which is a shame, because I do need to go to level four today. That was kind of my plan. But I guess we'll see how we go. Right, let's quickly drop the rest of this stuff into the freezer so that it doesn't go stale. Okay, seems like that's everything. Let's just plop it all in here. Let's eat the burrito. And then lastly, let's get ourselves the water dispenser. Like I said, any water dispenser you find and you've got are able, if you are able to carry it home, definitely do so. It is so, so useful, especially at the beginning when all of the water starts stopping because it's, pr it's pretty much free water for the first like few weeks. You can survive on it really well. Right, it's 12.30. Let's quickly wash up. Always remember to keep up your hygiene whenever you can. And then of course, can't forget to do our exercise. Let's do 20 minutes of push-ups. Me giving a head like. Let's equip the bag back. Let's not forget that. And then let's sit down and rest. Okay, good. Let's keep moving now. Okay, good. We're rested. Let's keep moving. So I've got quite a bit of food. We got freezers. We can keep the food lasting for a while. But what about resources and water? Well, we don't have enough resources such as planks to barricade all the windows. And we also need planks to build barrels. The rain catching ones, not the, not the storage ones. And that is also why we've been collecting garbage bags. But in order to build a rain barrel catching water machine, we do need for carpentry and we do need planks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and scout down a place where we can get a lot of the planks that we need, as well as some experience. Normally, you can scout down your surrounding houses for beds and uh, doors and chairs and furniture that you can disassemble. But once you deplete that resource, the next best thing that you want to look for is going to be something like this, a motel. Nice. Do we have any more around here? I can hear some more. Doesn't look like it for now. Oh no, wait, there you are. You're hiding underneath the stairs, you peasant. Oh, there's quite a few sat around this place, isn't there? Let's take you all down. I don't want any of you sneaking up on me while I'm doing this that I, you know, collecting planks for my lovely builds. Okay, that's taken care of. Let me just go and turn off my car. No point in leaving it on, wasting all the fuel. Right then, here we go. A motel. Place full of beds, aka resources, aka carpentry experience. Okay, let's begin.
Okay, so I have disassembled pretty much everything that I could have. I've disassembled all of the beds, all of the doors, and pretty much almost all of the furniture. And I have managed to get myself to Carpentry Level 4. Now, normally, I would 100% recommend you to read a Carpentry book, one that is associated with your current skill of Carpentry, so that you get a really nice multiplier for all the XP you're getting. For example, if I had read a whole Carpentry book Level 4, I would have been leveling this up about five times faster, I believe. So definitely read a book when you need experience because it helps insanely well. But because I'm on a timer, because I'm trying to show you guys as much as I can, I don't have time to read books. But it's alright because we have achieved our goal, so I'm just going to collect some of the wood and then we're going to head back home. Because it is already 9 o'clock, so sun is setting and we want to get back into our house. We do not want to be outside in the dark. All right, and that is all of the planks and nails collected. We have 42 planks and 55 nails, which is pretty damn good. It's definitely going to be more than enough for what we need. So let's get back in the car. Let's start up the engine. I said, let's start up the engine. Good. And let's get going back home. Just going to take a little shortcut through the car park. And here we are. Home sweet home. Ooh, but just a second, we've got an invader. Let's take care of you quickly, buddy. Hello. What are you doing in my house? I didn't invite you. Silly, goofy man. Now then, it is pretty much 11 o'clock. So, to quickly demonstrate why we needed a level 4 carpentry, let's grab a few of these nails. Let's grab a few of these planks. And let's go build ourselves a rain collector barrel. Now, I usually like to build these somewhere in the open area. You have to make sure to build them under the normal sky so there cannot be anything above them and the best location to place them in would be somewhere where you are planning to put your farm so if you right click you go carpentry then you go furniture and whoops i forgot my garbage bags all right let's just quickly get those you'll need four garbage bags for this so don't forget to grab those and then like i said before carpentry furniture rain collector barrel you are going to be able to build an upgraded version afterwards once you reach carpentry level 7 but for now the normal one with uh, carpentry 4 will be more than enough so just click on it click where you want it and your boy will automatically go ahead and build it you will need the associated tools with it which is why it's always good to have a hammer a screwdriver and a saw on you in your backpack and once it's built there you go. Rain collector barrel contains 160 units of water. Now, the water in that barrel is going to get collected over time when it rains. However, it is going to be tainted, so it's not safe to drink. However, once you build a lot of them, it is really good to use for watering your crops. And you can also use it to fill up the pots that you have in your house and then sterilize the water in an oven to turn it from poison water into actual nice drinkable water. So there there you go everyone you've got food that can last you a long while because we got ourselves a freezer and we got a renewable source of water for now so let's finish it off with eating a little bit of our vegetable and corned beef stir fry that i'm pretty sure we made back in the first episode and look at it it's still good oh never mind it's stale now whoops we'll definitely have to finish it soon then but for now it does the trick right then everyone i hope you enjoyed today's episode if you did make sure to leave a like if you would like to see more make sure to subscribe and if you have any tips or tricks that you know of and you would like to share with us or any corrections for my video then please leave them in the comments below now then thank you all again for watching and i will see you all in the next video goodbye
Check me out.